our next speaker is Simon Jones, um, who was also selected from the abstract submissions. Uh, Simon completed his PhD in the Department of Immunology at Imperial College of London, um, and this is his first first postdoctoral position, um, for which he has begun with uh, Professor Bruce Brew uh, in the Applied Neurosciences Research Group at the AMR. AMR. So, Simon, I will let you speak on. Thank you very much, Ashley. Um, firstly, I'd just like to extend a, a huge um, thank you to the organising committee for giving me this opportunity to tell you guys a little bit about what we are up to in the Applied Neurosciences Group over at the, uh, the AMR. So the major project that uh, I'm working on is trying to modulate the kynurenine pathway um, to hopefully pro promote stem cell repair in MS. And um, this was published in 2006, and, and really this is to illustrate the, the main motivation, I guess, for, for the project. Um, these are the, uh, the current therapies for MS patients, and I want to point out um, the, the use of interferon beta as a, a common therapy. Um, and really what I want to say here is that these therapies are largely immunomodulatory. They inhibit immune responses or they alter immune responses. And since 2006, there's been um, a flurry of activity in terms of MS therapies. We've had these four new therapies um, on the, uh, available to MS patients. However, this, this quote, which I've pulled out from the paper here, still stands. Um, the new therapies have gone a, a large way to address the third point that MS patients no longer require nasty and regular injections because these three therapies here in bold are oral therapies. However, the overall effect on disability progression is still very, very limited. Um, as I said, these therapies largely target the uh, immune response. Our group has had a, a long-standing interest in the kynurenine pathway, and it, uh, it describes the metabolism of tryptophan, one of nine essential amino acids that we need to get through our diet. And in the nervous system, uh, the kynurenine pathway accounts for over 90% of the way in which tryptophan is metabolized, the rest of it going into protein synthesis and uh, serotonin and melatonin synthesis. And I just want to spend a little bit of time just pointing out some of the key players here. So in red, um, highlighting the three major um, neurotoxic metabolites in the, in the KP. I'll refer to the kynurenine pathway as the KP um, from now on. Um, 3HK, 3HAA, and, and Quinn have all been established as having neurotoxic effects. At the same time, there are a couple of neuroprotective KP metabolites. So kynurenic acid over here, and PIC, or picolinic acid, down here. Okay. I also want to point out that the main substrate um, of the kynurenine pathway is NAD, uh, the cofactor, central cofactor NAD, which is important uh, a little bit later on. In blue, you can see the major enzymes. Uh, in bold, I'm going to talk a, a bit about IDO, which is the most uh, well-characterized enzyme of uh, um, the kynurenine pathway. And I'm also going to mention KMO, which comes in a little bit further downstream. And it's important just to note its position there for downstream of kynurenine. So, I don't want to go through all of these in the interest of time, but uh, essentially I've put up here some of the uh, historical publications uh, and some more recently that are relevant to, to my project that really established the uh, immunomodulatory effects of the KP. Um, from Munn's seminal paper, which showed that inhibiting IDO actually induced the rejection of um, fetuses in, in pregnant mice, um, right the way through to these um, more, more relevant publications here, one to know interferon beta treated MS patients have increased KP activity. The take home message here is that the KP has been well established now as being central in the regulation of immune tolerance and inflammation. 
And if we look at um, neurological disorders, KP has also been implicated in a, in a number of neurological disorders, which I've listed here on the left. And, and this is just uh, a slide which you, you, you're not supposed to be able to read, but just illustrate the, the number of um, potential alterations there in these disorders. Uh, MS is still a relatively under-investigated disease in terms of modulating the KP. Now, one of the big paradoxes with activation of the, of the KP is the fact that initially it's a good thing for inflammatory neuroinflammatory uh, uh, neuro diseases because it inhibits the immune system, brings about a state of immunosuppression, um, likely through uh, increased activity of tolerogenic dendritic cells, but essentially inhibiting some of these nasty um, T helper cell responses that you guys heard about um, from the earlier presenter on MS. Now, the problem with that is that it produces downstream neurotoxic metabolites, which I've mentioned, and, and the three there that I highlighted earlier, 3HA, QUIN, and 3HK, particularly important. So we've got this um, double-edged sword paradox. So it certainly means that activation of the KP is likely to be a balancing act between these neuroprotective metabolites and these neurotoxic ones. And this is the kind of working hypothesis that we have. Chronic or, or long-term activation of the KP leads to overproduction of, over, overproduction of neurotoxic metabolites, depletion of tryptophan, the essential amino acid, and that is what is driving the neurodegeneration that we see in MS patients. Now, some of the data underpinning um, what I've just talked about. So this is um, from the EAE model, which you guys heard a bit about um, earlier, so it's uh, great to have that introduced so well. Um, so this is the widely accepted model of, of MS in mice, and when we look at uh, a marker of kynurenine pathway activation, this is the ratio of kynurenine to tryptophan, so more kynurenine, less tryptophan means more activation. As mice get more and more disabled, as their clinical scores go up, we see a marked increase in the activation of the KP. And we also see an increase in quinolinic acid, one of those major neurotoxic metabolites as EAE scores go up. Importantly, when we inhibit the, e, uh, the KP sorry, with uh, an IDO inhibitor or a KMO inhibitor, those two enzymes that I mentioned earlier, we see a recovery of um, EAE scores. So these are uh, control mice with full-blown disease, and when we give the inhibitors, we see a, a, a recovery. Interestingly as well, um, kynurenic acid, uh, neuroprotectant, is decreased as these mice get more and more disabled. What's really exciting is that when we look at patients with MS, we see a, a similar, striking, uh, strikingly similar situation. So um, there are four major types of MS, and, and two are shown here. Um, Relapsing remitting MS is the, is the most common type, and here is secondary progressive MS, patients in remission, patients in relapse. Essentially, you've got um, severity of disease getting worse along here, and we see an increase in the concentration of quin in both the serum and in the cerebral spinal fluid of these patients. So the, the first um, hypothesis. So the KP by depleting tryptophan and producing neuroactive metabolites, modulates the function of neural progenitor cells. So we think that stem cells within the central nervous system are playing an important role here, and this is what my project is focusing on. So uh, these are uh, what I'm going to call neural stem cells, NSCs. They can differentiate down three major lineages. Here we've got them differentiating into, into neurons. Um, these are the guys that I'm more interested in, the oligodendrocytes, which are the main cellular targets of MS. And you, you saw a nice slide from the earlier presenter on MS about um, how the immune system attacks myelin. Well, these guys are the cells that are actually producing that myelin and insulating those axons, the oligodendrocytes. And, of course, the other um, cell type that these neural stem cells differentiate into are the uh, uh, supporting astrocytes. So... This is the only uh, slide which uh, I'm going to show you, which is uh, published data. Uh, we've previously shown that neural stem cells express IDO when uh, activated by uh, the pro-inflammatory pro cytokine interferon gamma. 
And this is true of a number of other cell types as well. Now, when you look at this in a little bit more detail, um, we see here that interferon gamma greatly upregulates IDO in both uh, proliferation and differentiation cultures of neural stem cells. And interestingly, interferon beta has uh, less of an effect on um, IDO, but hugely upregulates kynurenic acid. So the, the take-home point here is that these two different interferons probably drive different routes along the kynurenic pathway. Interferon gamma e increasing IDO uh, and TDO and lowering kynurenic acid. Remember, kynurenic acid is a neuroprotectant. Interferon beta decreasing um, KMO and increasing kynurenic acid production. So uh, potentially interesting in terms of the use of interferon beta as a, um, as a treatment for MS patients. The proliferation of neural stem cells is affected by KP activation. So when we uh, culture these neural stem cells with interferon gamma, you can see the uh, control culture here with interferon gamma. We see a, a marked suppression of proliferation. And to a lesser extent, the same effect with interferon beta. Um, and again, these neural stem cells grow in these uh, lovely little neurosphere cultures. If you add interferon gamma, you can see much smaller um, and lower levels of, of proliferation in those cultures. When we add the neuroprotectant kynurenic acid, it partly restores proliferation of those interferon gamma-treated neural stem cells. And interestingly, when we stimulate with interferon beta and we get this um, inhibition of neural stem cell proliferation, if we add quinolinic acid at basal concentrations, we get a recovery. And that links with um, earlier data that we published showing that at these low concentrations, quin um, acts as a, a substrate for NAD synthesis. Now, I have, um, I've become more interested in, in oligodendrocyte precursor cells, mainly because physiologically we think these are probably more important in terms of the repair of neurons. So they're an intermediate stem cell. Um, this series of pictures here is, is ultimately to illustrate the fact that these guys are very common in the central nervous system, in all parts of the central nervous system. In fact, um, it's been published that they, they probably represent between 3 and 9% of total cells in the CNS. And these are the cells that go on to form myelinating mature oligodendrocytes. So I've been working trying to repeat some of the stuff that we've shown in neural stem cells with oligodendrocyte precursor cells. And this is just some images of them in culture, the neural stem cells, as I said, in these neurosphere cultures. If you grow them uh, adherently, they look kind of fibroblastic. Oligodendrocyte precursor cells um, have this characteristic bi or tripolar morphology and very bright field. So happily, we have a panel, or there are a panel of well-recognized markers that we can use to track this differentiation. So I've been doing some work on, on that. So our neural stem cells here along the top compared with our oligodendrocyte precursor cells along the bottom. You can see in the OPC cultures we have a down-regulation of the stem cell markers nested in PDGF receptor alpha. The eight, uh, marker for OPCs, a, A2B5, is... Um, up regulated in the OPCs. And then these markers of, of more mature oligodendrocytes, um, again, are upregulated in the OPCs compared to the NSCs. Um, the problem here is that it's obviously still a, a very mixed population. And we actually are moving towards a, an ex vivo isolation of these cells to get pure populations so we can actually really characterize the KP in these OPC cells. So I just want to finish very quickly with, with one slide on um, this second hypothesis, which we're, we're very excited about. Um, ultimately, we want to look at whether modulating the KP in these progenitor cells will actually improve the myelination of neurons. And we've got some data in the EAE model that, that would suggest it does. So just very briefly, remyelination is a normal physiological process that occurs when um, the myelin surrounding neurons is damaged. Remyelination occurs, we get functional recovery. However, if there's no remyelination, there's a progressive decline in neurodegeneration. We're wondering whether that is due to a failure of oligodendrocyte precursor cells to survive, proliferate, or differentiate appropriately. So here's the data that we're, uh, we're pretty excited about. This is um, EAE model, days after MOG immunization. You've seen some uh, similar data shown a bit earlier. Disability scores increasing here. So as the mice get the disease, we give the treatment 
uh, onset of disease. And you can see the use of the two inhibitors of the KP um, drives a rather um, striking improvement in EAE. And, and interestingly, the KMO inhibitor, it looks like, is, is slightly better. So uh, a shameless plug um, published yesterday. If you're interested in the, the kynurenine pathway, um, I've just written a short review on it uh, in stem cell biology. Um, we really want to promote, promote it. We think there's lots of opportunity for collaboration here, lots of things that people are seeing. Um, we think this pathway uh, is involved. So um, very briefly, conclusions. KP is activated in EAE and also aberrant in MS patients. Neural stem cells express and upregulate the KP. KP activation in neural stem cells inhibits their proliferation, and this is influenced by the addition of KP metabolites. There are differential effects of interferon gamma and interferon beta on the KP, and lastly, inhibition of the KP can rescue mice from the disability um, associated with EAE. So just to acknowledge um, current members of the uh, Applied Neurosciences Lab, my supervisor, uh, Bruce Brew, um, David Brown, who continues to be and has been very helpful, and our collaborators, they're more than collaborators, really, over at Macquarie University, um, Gilles and Edwin, and these are the guys that really are experts on the, on the KP and very, very um, good at uh, quantifying it. And, of course, our um, funding supporters on the left there. Thank you very much. Thank you for that, Simon. Are there, are there any questions we can take from the, the audience? is a very episodic disease. How do you see the KP pathway fitting in? Do you see it as a secondary damaging uh, component after an episodic uh, trigger from the immune system, but one that you might modify to cause improvement? Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, so we, we envisage that it's, um, it's, it's more important at a, at a chronic level. So where activation of the KP has gone on for uh, a sustained period of time and levels of those neurotoxic metabolites uh, have, have increased and we've got some data um, suggesting that they actually, particularly quin, needs to get quite high um, physiological concentrations um, before you actually get those neurotoxic effects on, uh, on, on the cells and particularly the uh, oligodendrocytes. So it's, it's likely that, they're, that um, it's a, a more of a, a chronic um, issue with activation of the KP. And in fact, as I, as I suggested earlier, the initial activation of the KP is, is probably a good thing. All right, if there's one more pressing question that somebody wants to ask, we could take that. Otherwise, thank you. Thank Simon. you very much.